Hi everyone, and welcome to my next video. This week I'm going to be doing something a little different and give you a short tutorial on how to create botanical inks from foraged natural ingredients. In this example I'm using bright pink peony petals that I picked from my dad's garden recently. I just picked a few heads that looked like they were closer to being over than the rest, so that the plant had plenty left for the bees. I should note that after I took this footage I also used the stamens and pollen to see if they produced a yellow, and they did indeed produce a really nice strong golden yellow. So this is a plant you can get multiple inks from very easily because the heads are nice and large. At the start of this video I'm harvesting the petals and putting them into a pestle and mortar. I'm doing the petals separately as different parts of the plant usually have different pigments. Water is added to the petals and then I start mashing them up with the pestle and mortar. I adjust the amount of water as I go along to keep the mixture combining smoothly and to make sure that I get a reasonable amount of ink out at the end. There is no hard and fast rule with the water amount, it's just an obvious judgement call that you will get a more dilute ink with more water. Once you've completely mashed up the petals with the water, you can then strain the mixture through a fine mesh sieve into a receptacle. I'm using a plastic beaker here, but you can use glass. I would caution you to use something that you do not use for drinking or eating out of, as you may end up making something that should not be ingested, and you don't want to leave trace amounts on things you consume things from. As a side note here, please don't create ink with plants that you know to be toxic, as they may produce fumes that would not be good for you to inhale. Once you've strained your liquid, you can then add salt to it to act as a preservative. Add just a little of this and then also add some binder. In this case I'm using gum arabic that I ordered online as a powder. I mixed up a solution of a small amount of gum arabic with some water separately. And then I added a few small drops of that mixture to the ink liquid. The binder helps to give it a bit of consistency and may give it a bit more of glossy finish depending on how much you use. Once you've added those components, congratulations, you just made your first ink. Now the fun begins as you can then pet the mixture into separate containers to test what happens with various additives. You can colour shift the mixture with things that affect the pH or other values of the liquid, such as vinegar, alum, washing powder, etc. Another quick word of caution here, please be careful if handling anything that is not safe to have on your skin. In my case I've only been experimenting with cider vinegar and alum, which are both safe, so I haven't been using gloves. In this video you can see me adding alum to one pot and then cider vinegar in a pipette to the other. The colour changes fairly instantaneous in a lot of cases after swirling the mixture around. However, what you see in the pot may not be what you see on the page. A lot of the time there is more change to come, with inks initially looking pink, but then oxidising on the page to green as they dry for example. Or I have had blues which oxidise to a pretty lilac. One of my favourites was purple foxglove and cider vinegar as it looked bright pink in the vial, and then I swatched it and it gradually changed to a beautiful bluey green as it dried. You will see a swatch of this later in the video, but it will appear pink as it hasn't dried out yet. The remainder of this video is footage of me swatching out all of the initial inks that I made after foraging ingredients from my dad's garden and my own garden. These are inks that I made and swatched immediately off camera and then left in the fridge for 5-10 to 10 days and came back to see whether they still swatched well after storage. Due to the fact that I made them all on different days, some of them have been stored for 2 days and some of them up to 10 days. As you will see, a great many of the inks still have a lot of vibrancy to them, especially any that are green, yellow or purple. I do have the original swatch sheets to compare to, and there is a little loss between them, even for the bright colours. 
e.g. they appear slightly washed out compared to how they were day one, but are still very indicative of the same shade. I should note that I didn't manage to include footage of the final dried colours in this video as it took too long for them to dry out, so there are some colours in this video which then oxidised further and dried and became quite different. There were two examples that I was a little disappointed to find were not very stable at all. One of these is Hedgerow Crane's Bill, which is a wild geranium with tiny purple flowers that is fairly common in the fens. I could see the bees were actively enjoying the plant, so I didn't want to harvest too many flowers and only made the base ink with salt added for this plant. Initially on day one it's watched as an amazing lilac blue with the edges drying slightly green. But only three days later it's watched as a pale bluey green which is still very attractive but very much more muted than the beautiful colour that it was day one. Similarly, blue rose petals with sw salt swatched a beautiful bluey green day one and appeared as though it was drying the same way, but the colour on paper shifted more towards a duller mint green. The fresh swatch done two days later was very, very washed out with barely any pigments appearing more like sepia. However, both these cases were very useful to test because the two colour shifted variants of the blue rose petals with cider vinegar and with alum swatched out quite brightly still and the original swatch of Hedgerow Crane's Bill is still vibrant on the paper I painted it onto, which suggests that it would be a plant to use fresh on the day only, but the colour can be relied upon to remain on the page well after use. I am of course not leaving these pages out in the light, because the inks are not likely not at all light fast, but I am doing some tests on separate paper to see whether a UV protective fixative spray would help preserve the inks for longer. I think that's everything I have to share on this for now, but if you follow my Instagram, which is linked in the description, you'll likely see me updating as I experiment more. Ink making has turned out to be a really lovely side hobby, and it's very enjoyable just mixing and seeing what colours you get out of various plants. I feel like it's given me a connection back to plant life that I was missing, especially in the case of wild plants. For example, I discovered this week that mallow, which is a common purple wildflower in the UK, creates a beautiful blue, an aqua, and an ink that is midway between green and blue with blue-tinged edges, depending on what you add to it. I also looked the plant up online and found out that you can eat pretty much the whole thing with the little cheese-shaped fruits being edible, the leaves being suitable for salads when young, and the flowers being able to be used as garnish. It's amazing to find that this plant is so useful in such a variety of ways, and I've been admiring it just for its appearance for so much of my life. I hope you enjoyed seeing my progress with ink making so far, and maybe you'll even give it a go yourself. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button so you can see when I put up a new video. Thanks for watching, and see you next time!
Woo! <laughs>